I'm just going to edit the curtain wall so that we can make this curtain wall profile, the edge of the outline of the wall, go up with this ramp. You can see that I'm quite happy for this slab, which sits higher than the ramp at this point, for the curtain wall to sit at that point. This bit down here needs some editing, and I might work on that later because this is down low and that's the curtain wall that's not getting touched. But up here, I'm just going to muck around with this one. So if I click on the curtain wall itself, note, I know I've clicked on the curtain wall when I've got this dash box that appears around it. If I hit the tab key, you can see that that's a panel, and over here, There's a panel, I'm just hitting the tab key, and there's a grid in there as well. I want the wall. If I edit the profile and come to the elevation that suits me, be it the missed elevation, I'm just using the view key, all I can do is override the panel, and I can click on outlines, and I can click on the slab that I want it to follow perfectly, and I'm going to use the trim command to tidy it up, and I must get rid of any as usual, overlapping lines, unreplied lines, and use the big green tip. And now can you see, it doesn't like one of the curtain grids in the volume. That's okay, I might just need to double check that that's alright. But now my little curtain wall runs perfectly up the edge of this slab. And if I needed to, and I wanted it to be recessed and hidden out of view. Oh, hang on. No, I can't. I would need to have... You can see I can actually see that there. If I come back to here and edit the profile again, I would move this down the depth of whatever that is, which is 30 mil. Okay, so it's just edit profile. You can see that actually if I did a closed loop within a closed loop, would actually put a hole in it. That is not what I want. I could actually try to put a mulligan on one half as well. So edit the curtain wall, edit profile, override that profile to look exactly the way you want. So I've just dropped it down negative 30 but still locked it in. Yes, I'll delete that element. And just to finish off, I could come back here and add a grid. This isn't what I'm doing for my design, but I just wanted to finish off. You see how easy these grids are. The grids work just like, uh, like as a construction line. And I can edit their position quite easily. Where they start, where they finish, their height. Okay, and then if I use my tab key, Tab, tab, tab. I'm just hitting it once. I'm not holding it down. When I get to my system panel glaze, there's quite a large selection. I haven't loaded any, but there are quite a lot of um, curtain wall doors. Let's just swap it out for something, and then I'll show you what it's like. So if I swap it out, you can see that I can make it something completely solid. If I go to the insert, load family. I'm going straight to curtain walls by no, curtain wall panel. And each one of these is a door that's designed to sit exactly in a per curtain wall panel and will adjust its size to suit. So I'll choose a double with a diesel. And ideally, you choose all of them, including empty panel, which is very handy as well, which is, is exactly as it suggests. I'll just give it a minute to load in and I'm going to do the same thing. Tab, 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 select. And I'm going to change that to double door so you can see what's going on. Right, so see how it just perfectly added. If I was to change that, the door would adjust accordingly. And if I wanted that to be two doors, I would add in another curtain grid. I wouldn't need to add the whole segment. I could just add a one segment. Okay, you can see that you can split it. I deliberately did not do that halfway. So once you know how to adjust these grid lines and which what each one each one each roll has, then it becomes quite easy to make a shop front and, and all sorts of bits and pieces with that.